What's happening guys, Brandon here, and yes, I've got my Steemit shirt, just came in the mail yesterday. By the way, guys, if you want uh, some Steemit apparel, stuff like that, then I did set up a Teespring store, and I did have a link to it on one of my previous posts, but I just found out that there's actually a Steemit shop right here on Steemit. So if you guys are interested in ordering a shirt, a hoodie, a hat, a beanie, a coffee mug, anything like that, just come over here to the Steemit store and you can purchase from there. It's actually a little bit cheaper than the ones I had on Teespring anyway. So um, yeah, guys, you can check that out there right in the Steam It menu. Now in today's video, I'm gonna be doing things a little bit different. In the past, I've talked about things you should do on Steam It, how to gain your following, how to, how to decide what uh, you, know, you wanna post about on your Steam It channel. Today's video is gonna be a little different because I'm gonna be talking about the 10, top 10 things you should not be doing here on Steam It. This came as a recommendation from one of my followers. I can't remember who it was. I wish I could. You probably know who you are. Uh, but they recommended, say, Brandon, you're always talking about what you should do on Steam it. Why don't you make a video about things you shouldn't do on Steam it? So today I'm going to give you my top 10 things I think you should be watching out for and not doing on the Steam it platform. Now, as you guys know, with every video I do, I give away 20 US dollars worth of SBD to a person who upvotes comments on my post. So if you like my post, if you like my video, you can upvote it, comment on it, and I pick a random winner tomorrow who will win 20 US dollars worth of SBD. And I'll be picking the winner from yesterday's video at the end of this one. So stay tuned for that. All right, guys, so I'm probably going to zoom through these uh, points or else I'll be here all day talking about this, and I could go on and on about it. But the number one thing that we have an issue with here on Steam, and I think we can all agree on this, is plagiarism. This comes in the form of just stealing people's content, posting it onto your uh, Steam it channel, and taking credit for it. You know, some people do this probably not maliciously. They, some people actually probably don't think it's a big issue. Now, Steemit is a decentralized platform, meaning there is no main governing body that governs us all. So technically there are no rules. But what I want to tell you guys is just because there's no rules on Steemit doesn't mean there aren't repercussions. So if you're out there doing something maliciously or not, and you do something wrong, the Steemit community will come in and flag your content. Um, they will downvote your posts. Your posts could go hidden. You could lose all your reputation. So you need to be accountable for what you're doing here on the platform. So again, no rules here on Steemit technically, but there are repercussions for your actions. So you need to be knowledgeable about some things you shouldn't do here on the Steemit platform, and that's why I'm going over this today in today's video. Now, there will be links to everything that I mentioned in today's video underneath this video. So if you want to check out any of this stuff, and I recommend that you guys do, um, the links will be below. All right, so again, number one thing that we have a problem with is plagiarism. Now, there's a big project that is helping out the Steemit community, making it a better place, keeping it plagiarism free, or at least trying to. And that would be Steam Cleaners. If you guys are not familiar with Steam Cleaners, you can go to steamcleaners.org and check them out. They are actually the owner of the Cheetah Bot as well, which goes out and checks for duplicate content. So if you're posting something on your Steemit channel that you've also posted maybe on your, your blog out there on the web, it may leave a comment on your post. And what it'll do is it'll actually upvote your post and it'll comment on your post letting you know that, hey, we found similar content out on the web. And basically what that does is it allows your followers to, to kind of be aware of that and let your followers determine whether that really is plagiarism or not. It may be that it's your channel. It may be that it's your website out there. Um, and so your followers will probably know that. I mean, they could tell that if, you know, you post to your YouTube channel and then you, you brought it over to Steam it. Well, even if Cheetah comes by and upvotes the post and comments on it saying, hey, we found similar content out there, if your followers can tell the, you know, they'll be able to go to your YouTube channel and see that it's the same channel name, it's, it's you, so it's fine. So it's basically to bring awareness to similar content out on the web. Now you can get on, you can get blacklisted with Cheetah, which means they're going to flag all your content, or they could start actually flagging, downvoting um, your content. And if that happens, there's a way to get off of it, um, and it's listed right here on Steam Cleaners, Cheetah, How to Appeal. So you'll just need to go there and prove that it is your content that you're posting on Steemit and they will get you off that blacklist. So I just want you guys to be aware of this. It's not likely this is going to happen if you're doing all the right things. But if you do find yourself in a situation where, oh man, you're, you're posting your own content on Steemit, but you've also posted it somewhere else and Cheetah starts flagging you, there is something you could do about it. You can appeal it and they're very understanding. They'll, they'll take you off their blacklist and all that good stuff. But it is there you know, in place just to make sure that Steemit stays plagiarism free or as plagiarism free as possible. Because um, that is a big issue we have here on the platform. Now, if you want to learn about the different versions of plagiarism and, and how that's happening, it's, it's not just stealing words. It's not just stealing articles or stealing videos. It's also stealing pictures. So I know a lot of you guys 
probably aren't aware, but it's a really a big deal if you're, let's say you write a post about, um, write a post about cats or something like that. And then you go out on Google Images and you search for a picture of a cat, you take that picture. Well, if the picture's copywritten and you don't have the right to use it, that is plagiarism. It's a form of plagiarism. Now, what I use is a site called Pixabay. Let me pull this up. And this is a place where you can get free images. This is um, copyright free, copyright and free. So, so if this is the first you've heard about Pixabay, Pixabay is a vibrant community of creatives sharing copyright free images and videos. All can, contents are released under Creative Commons. CCO, which makes them safe to use without asking for permission or giving credit to the artist, even for commercial purposes. So you can use this any way, you can use these pictures any way you want to, even for commercial uh, purposes. And this is actually where I get the different images I want to use in my thumbnails. So like yesterday's video, I did a video about uh, how, you know, my, how I do my videos, you know, with my software, my lighting and everything like that. So I wanted to find a picture of a clapper, which is this little thing right here. And so you can actually see, here's the exact one that I used in my thumbnail. So I create all my images myself or my graphics, but sometimes I'll borrow uh, different graphics from Pixabay. It's a perfect place to do that. You don't have to give any uh, credit back. Now, it's not a bad idea to actually give credit um, where, of where you found an image or where you got your image from, um, unless you're taking it yourself. Um, that way, if something does happen, if something does occur and the cheetah bot comes along or something like that, um, you can show that, hey, this was a copyright-free image, image that I'm using, um, and there's nothing wrong with it. So plagiarism is a really big issue here on Steven, and it's something I just really want you guys to be aware of. I doubt any of my followers are actually doing this, um, but there are people out there that are just grabbing other YouTubers' videos, posting them on their blog, thinking, and, and they think, like, they do it innocently, thinking, well, I'm going to get them some more followers, probably. I'm sharing their content, which they should be happy about. That's not the case, guys. You're actually stealing their work in hopes to get upvotes or to get a follow on your channel. But if you're not the rightful owner of that content, you can't do it. So just use some common sense out there, guys, and be careful that you're not plagiarizing. All right, guys, so here's another post on Steam, and I want to bring some awareness to the Crypto Fiend created this etiquette guide for us to use. Again, there are no rules. There's no official etiquette guide here for Steam, but these are basically a list of th standards that we should go by as a community, and it's even listed in the FAQs here for Steemit. So if you go to the FAQs, look up the etiquette guide, you will find this post. Now, again, no rules here whatsoever, but there are repercussions if we don't all kind of go by the same standards. So I would recommend that you guys read through this etiquette guide and be familiar with it. I don't actually agree with everything, every single thing here on this etiquette guide. It's not 100%. Um, you know, I don't think it's 100% accurate of things we have to do or shouldn't do, but there are a lot of good points here. So I would definitely recommend going through that. And I think one thing that was mentioned on here is do not beg for upvotes or re-steam. So that's my number two thing. Do not beg for, for people to come to your content and upvote it. Do not beg for people to re-steam your articles. Um, chances are people aren't going to do it, you know, and it's just tacky that you're asking for it. So, you know, position yourself. What I like to tell people is position yourself as a content creator. Position Position yourself as a leader in the in the niche area that you're talking about, and you will never, ever, ever have to beg for an upvote or a, a follow or a re-steam or anything like that. Okay, so don't do that. Again, it's just tacky, and you probably won't get the upvote or re-steam anyway. Now, number three is do not spam people. Now, spam comes in a lot of different forms and ways. If you're going to people's blog posts just to say, and, and there's actually bots out there, I'm sure of it, that just say great video, great video, great video, great post, great post on every single people's post. If you Google spam and you really want a definition of it, it's irrelevant or inappropriate messages sent on the internet to a large number of recipients or send the same message indiscriminately to large numbers of recipients on the internet. So it's mostly unwanted messages, right? And so we get this a lot here on Steemit. And again, some of it is bots sending out, you know, great video, great post, whatever. There's also a form of uh, wallet spam, I guess I'll call it. And that's where people go and they actually send you over like 0 .001 Steam just so they can send you a message. So like here's a good example right here from Sky Dragon. Just let me know about their new upvoting bot service. You know, I'm not upset with this, but it is kind of annoying that people can just go in here and send you a message in your wallet by uh, sending you 0 .001 SBD. Um, but this does happen and I don't know there's any way to really combat this. And I guess at the end of the day, at least they're sending you a little bit of money. Um, so you'll read their messages. But anyway, this is also a form of spam. And there's many forms of spam here on Steemit. So if it doesn't feel right, guys, I guess that's, that's a really good way to go about it, is if, if it doesn't feel right what you're doing, 
then it's probably not right. So don't do it. So if you're just spamming people's articles saying, hey, check out my blog post or whatever, that's spam. Don't do it. Okay, pretty simple. Now, number four on my list of things you should not be doing on Steemit is misuse of the tags. And we see this a lot here on Steemit. So if you go over here to the tag categories, uh, let's just click on new and go to, I don't know, introduce yourself as one of the worst used, or I'm sorry, the worst, worst misused tag out there. And this tag right here, introduce yourself, I even, I posted a post about, I think it was a week or so ago, and I had somebody say, Brandon, you should be putting this in the introduce yourself tag. It'll get more attention. Well, it wasn't about, the, whatever the post was, I can't remember what it was. It wasn't me introducing myself, so it doesn't belong in the introduce yourself category. Now, I've noticed recently that a lot of people are starting to use this correctly. Check this out. Hola, Steam It. Allow me to introduce myself. I'd like to introduce myself. Introducing myself to Steam It. Hello, Steam. So, I'm actually pleased to see that this is actually getting a lot better. I'm not sure what exactly has happened, or maybe it's just that we've got a ton of people joining Steam It right now, but I'm glad to see that this is actually becoming uh, more well used. Uh, but if you go to some other categories like photography, like any of these top categories, these are the most misused ones because they are the top categories. What people do is they go down here to view all tags. And I don't know if you guys know this, but if you go to view all tags, you can see which tags are getting the most money, the most payouts. So what, uh, unfortunately, what people are doing is saying, hey, I can just post, you know, my post in one of these tags, one of these categories, because you get to choose five for every post. And I'll just choose five of the top ones and I'll get more eyeballs on my article. What's going to happen, guys, is that people will see that you're posting inappropriate content in the wrong tag or the wrong category. And they might flag your content or, you know, at best, they, they don't even read your stuff because it doesn't make any sense. It's not in the right place. So be careful not to do that. That is a, kind of a form of abuse here on the Steemit platform. It, you know, it's just, it's just, it's tacky. Again, it's just tacky. So don't do it, guys. Number five on my list of things to not, to not do on Steemit is to post too often. Now, this can be debated depending on what kind of content you're putting out. If you're talking about like crypto news, for example, like one of the channels I follow is Altcoin Buzz, and I think they posted, um, hold on one second. I think they've posted five times in the last 24 hours, but they can get away with that because they're in a, a niche area or niche that it has a news that comes out every single hour. Like the news cycle is ridiculous with crypto and the speed at which the market moves is ridiculous. So they can come out with relevant content literally every hour if they wanted to. And luckily, you know, they don't do that. We can consume that much information probably, but um, they do post about every five, six hours, something like that. And it's actually good. I actually like to keep up with the crypto markets and what's going on in the news and the, the FUD out there or the FOMO that's going on out there um, in that crypto space. So it's actually, they can get away with it, and I think that's good. Now, if you're just posting stuff just to post it and kind of game the system and get upvotes and follows and all that stuff, you're just putting out a bunch of crap posts, <laughs> then that is not good, right? So only put out enough content that your, your readers can consume and that they're actually still enjoying and upvoting and stuff like that. You know, Steam It, you really want to be careful with that. If you're doing it on YouTube, it's not really that big of a deal. Um, here on Steemit, people only have so much upvotes they can give per day, right? So it, it may not even be in your best interest to post that often. So just, you know, use your discretion and be careful with that. All right, the number six thing I want to talk about is misusing your flagging privilege. I call it a privilege because we're, we're privileged to be able to flag content we think is inappropriate or shouldn't be on Steemit. Let me go to the etiquette guide real quick and let's look at uh, the proper way to use the flagging system. Okay, it's actually in the steamcleaners.org website where I was reading this earlier, uh, downvote abuse. So fair downvotes are curator disagrees with the content of a post or a comment. So if you disagree with a post, then you can downvote it. The curator finds the content of a post contains abuse such as plagiarism. By all means, flag it, downvote it, get that crap off of Steemit, right? Now, unfair downvotes are where the curator wishes to harm a Steemit user by downvoting contributors' posts. A uh, curator wishes to harm an individual or specific group of users by downloading contributors and or supporters posts. Uh, the gray area here is retaliation, uh, retaliation downvotes, where if you just don't like somebody and you're just flagging, constantly just flagging their content and stuff, that's a form of abuse, um, or they're saying it's actually a kind of a gray area. Just be mindful. Now, I've only had to flag a couple of people here on Steemit. One of them is because they were spamming my, one of my articles with a bunch of crazy comments, so I flagged them. Um, I also had somebody who actually stole my content, stole one of my YouTube videos and posted it as if it was their own. And so I flagged their content. I reported it to 
uh, steam cleaners and they fix that right away. I don't know what they do. They go out and flag it and they, they get it taken care of. And those are the only reasons why I've ever had to do it. So just be careful. Don't get into some kind of flagging war like we've seen with Hagen and um, Bernie Sanders. You know, those two, everybody knows about them here on Steam It and how they're just out to get one another. That's, the bad, that's one of the bad things that can happen. Don't get into some kind of a, you know, where you're just abusing your power and flagging it into one of these flagging wars. You'll probably end up, you're going to lose either way, right? I think both of those guys are, are winning because they, they've got huge accounts. There's nothing for them to really worry about. But their reputations have been killed. I don't know if you've noticed that. At least Bernie Sanders has. Um, just don't get into any of those flagging wars. Be mindful of how you, you know, go about flagging content. I know that uh, Agroid here is one of our Steam witnesses, and he's proposed an idea that I kind of like, where you can actually, there'll be three options. Instead of upvote or flag, it'll be upvote, downvote, or flag. So, like, you would use the flag, which would actually could hurt somebody's reputation and uh, hide their content and stuff if it's, like, plagiarism or abuse that they're doing, um, or just downvote because you simply don't like it. I think that's a really good idea, especially because DTube, I'm not sure if you, you guys realize with DTube, let me pull that up real quick. So we've got a lot of new people coming over from YouTube and using DTube now. And if you go to a video, I'm just going to click on a random video here. Let me pause that. And if you look here, it looks just like YouTube, like there's an upvote or downvote. Well, it's a little bit different here on Steemit. So if you get that downvote, it actually can flag your content. It actually will flag your content and can hurt your reputation depending on the reputation and the uh, bank account of the person who does it. But so I think there really needs to be just a downvote option, not flag option. Otherwise, I think this should actually be changed here on DTube to a flag instead of, uh, you know, thumbs down because it's not necessarily, it's not really just a thumbs down, it's a flag. So um, yeah, I think that's a good idea that Agroid uh, came out with saying that we could possibly, you know, put that into our interface and into the, the Steam blockchain where there's actually three options. He said in an interview that it actually isn't that easy to do, but it could be done to have those three options um, instead of just the two. But that would be a good way to do it. But anyway, in the meantime, guys, just be mindful. Be careful about how you use your flagging powers. Um, you know, some of you guys have, have big accounts or higher reputations, and you could actually really, really damage somebody. And so just be careful and think about what you're doing before you flag somebody's stuff. Also, I don't know if you guys know this, but you should also leave a comment if you do flag somebody's post. If you have a good reason or you think you have a good reason for flagging somebody's content, then by all means do it, but leave a comment letting them know why they got flagged. That way they don't do it in the future. That's just good etiquette. All right, number seven is a pet peeve of mine that I've seen big on other social platforms like Instagram and Twitter. Don't follow expecting a reciprocating follow. Don't expect you know people to follow you just because you followed them. And that's kind of a, a gaming system I saw happening on Twitter where people just go out and follow massive amounts of accounts in hopes that these accounts are just going to follow them back. And then what they do is like once a week, they'll unfollow everybody that didn't follow them or they just didn't follow everybody. So it ends up looking like they have this, oh, popular channel because they got all these followers. At the end of the day, guys, it doesn't really matter how many followers you have on Steam if they're not really interested in your content. So it's better to organically get your following so that way they're actually upvoting your stuff, they actually like your stuff, they might re-steam your post. Um, do it naturally. Don't go out and follow a bunch of people just expecting them to follow you back. All right, number eight is another pet peeve of mine, and that is posting without editing your content. So before I post my content, you know, I go through it three, four, five times. I also edit my videos and watch them over. Like this video today is a little bit longer than my normal video, so it'll take me a little bit longer to edit it and go through it uh, twice <laughs> and make sure that everything is perfect. I also do that with the, the text that I put in my articles. I go through it more than once. Make sure that you're editing, proofreading all of your content that you're putting out. Because, you know, if you if you start misspelling a lot of stuff and people can tell you're just rushing content out, then they may think you're just putting a bunch of junk out just to get upvotes. So take your time. Put your best. I like to put my best into everything that I do anyway. So make sure you're doing that here on Steam. It, it will go a long ways for you. Number nine, do not upvote your own comments. Okay, I see a lot of people doing this, and it's just a way of stealing rewards from the reward pool. Um, let other people upvote your comments, okay? We're lucky enough that we get to upvote our own post, right? Now, there are some exceptions to this. If you're trying to, if you, like, really need to get somebody's attention on their post, and I've seen that people do this on my post. So they'll leave a comment on my post trying to get my attention, and then they'll, they'll upvote it by 50% or whatever, just so it goes to the top of the comments, and that way I, they can uh, get my attention, or if they feel like they need to get the attention of other people. That might be one exception for doing that, but... 
typically you don't really need to upvote your own comments. Um, it's just a way of gaming the system. And again, we're lucky enough we get to upvote our own post and nobody cares about that. So uh, yeah, just be mindful of that, not to upvote your own stuff, just to push it up to the top so people see you, unless you have a really good reason for that comment being seen. All right, and number 10, and I've mentioned this in another video, don't take criticism too personally, okay? If somebody's taking the time to give you constructive criticism, I don't, I don't mean like they're just posting a bunch of crap about you on your post, but if they're giving you constructive criticism, take it to heart, but don't take it personally, and don't let it keep you from enjoying your, your time here on Steemit. You know, I got a post like that, or I got a comment like that. Let me try to find it real quick. I got one here on my video on how to fix Steemit DTube thumbnail size issues. The person was Movie Vigilante, and what's funny is they actually won the comment reward for that day. But here, we can just read it right here. Please take this as constructive criticism. While I appreciate the help you provide this video, based on your title, I was expecting you to get straight to the point without the six minutes of filler at the beginning. Maybe make a separate video for the Facebook and cable TV talk. Nevertheless, thanks for the tutorial. I'll give it a try. That is constructive, po positive criticism, and I actually took that to heart. And I've actually, it's actually, I, as soon as I posted that video, I realized that I put too much filler there at the beginning. And that's one of the reasons why I've removed the rewards, you know, me giving out the 20 US dollars worth of SBD. Um, I moved that to the very end of my video because I want people to get the information they came for first, and then we'll cover that at the end. So take criticism, you know, take it to heart, but don't take it personally. Don't let it ruin your experience here on Steemit. If somebody's taking the time to give you constructive criticism, that's a good thing. That means you've got a healthy following that, you know, knows, like, and trusts you, and they're willing to dish out that, the honesty uh, and critique your, your video for you. So that's actually a good thing, and take negative and positive feedback the same way. All right, guys, so like I mentioned, I'm going to leave links to everything that I mentioned in today's video um, so you can check all that out for yourself, the etiquette guide, Steam, uh, steamcleaners.org, uh, the Cheetah page, uh, the Steam Cleaners page, all that good stuff I'm going to leave underneath this video. Also a link to Pixabay so you can see where to get copyright-free images to use in your blog post or your videos. So I'll leave all that below. But next, we need to go ahead and pick a winner from yesterday's video who upvoted and commented on my post. Let's do that now. All right, got the link in there. Let's pick a random winner. And the winner is Devil Mosin. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. They said, thanks for sharing great advice. I would also place a small hardware store clamp light behind so that it shines on your back and one side of your face. Make sure the lamp itself is out of frame to separate yourself from the background. Great suggestion. That's cool. I'm actually in the process of learning more about lighting, so I appreciate that comment. Uh, again, another constructive uh, critique here. So I appreciate that. Devil Mosin, I think I'm pronouncing that right. And you are the winner of yesterday's comment reward. So let's check and see how much that is today. All right, 2.8 SPD equals about a little bit over 20 US dollars. So let's go ahead and send that over to them now. All right, I got the name in there, the amount in there. Let's go ahead and send that over. All right, that went through. All right, guys, well, again, if you like my videos, if you like um, what I'm putting out here, go ahead and comment and then upload on my video if you'd like. And you could win 20 US dollars with the SPD on tomorrow's video. Until then, guys, have an awesome day.